everyone, it's Lauren and this is my Weber Weekly Update. Today I wanted to break down the entire buyer's process from start to finish and condense it in a little bit of a Cliff Notes version. Now, if you've been following me along, you will have noticed that I shared the whole process on a week-to-week -week basis when I bought my house and really dissected it. So if you want some more details, go ahead and watch those videos. But if you want the Cliff Notes version, this is for you. So let's jump into it. thinking about buying um, and if it's soon or maybe even a year or two years out, give me a call. That's where we begin our journey together and that's where we just have a very casual conversation. I get to know why you're looking to buy, um, the fun things like bedroom, bathroom, ideal home, budget, location. The world is your oyster. If you could paint your perfect picture, what would that be? From there, I then set you up with a lender if you haven't already gotten pre-approved. And I cannot stress enough how important that is to beginning your home buying journey. To go see homes before that is just a complete waste of time because if you can afford more, you're missing out on some really great options. And if you can afford less, you're gonna sell your, set yourself up for some major disappointment. Um, and I will say it's 2021, there has been a pandemic and the home buying process has changed. Uh, we now need to sign a COVID disclosure before we see any home. And some sellers, because they don't just want anyone going through their home and they don't want any licky loose some sellers are requiring that you have your pre-approval letter and your proof of funds along with the COVID disclosure. So get pre-approved. Talking to a good lender and securing a lender is just as crucial as picking a good real estate agent. So you must get pre-approved in the very beginning of your home buying journey. And getting pre-approved, it doesn't hurt. It's good to know exactly where your numbers are gonna be, what your monthly payments are gonna be, and it'll help you to determine where you should start your home search. So that brings me to the next step, which is a buyer's consultation. So I sit down with every one of my buyers, Nowadays, it's via Zoom, and we take an in-depth look at your hyper-local market. So once you know what your pre-approved budget is, um, we go on a home tour virtually together. I get to know um, what type of style of homes you like, how much work you're willing to do, and we look at the market trends. Looking at the market trends will make it very clear as to where you should start your search, um, it'll show, it'll be very clear where the most homes with that budget are available. And in each different neighborhood, that budget can offer different things. You might be able to afford a townhouse here. You might be able to afford a single family residence here, but you might have to give up a couple of things to fit in these different pockets and areas. So that's what we will uncover in the buyer's consultation. It helps me to get a better and a deeper understanding of what we are looking for. The next thing that will happen is that I will set you up on an auto listing alert. You will have access to our compass collection, which is really fun. We can write notes to each other. We can sort the houses that you like, the houses that you don't like, and we can request tours, which I will then show you. So after COVID, new thing again, there are now no open houses. You have to see every home via an appointment. So an agent has to accompany you. And because there are no open houses, we don't get to allow 30, 50 people coming through the house at one bulk of time. So it is a seller's market. There are a ton of buyers out there. You have to be on top of uh, the market and schedule your showing ASAP. There have been scenarios where they only have one weekend of showings and those book up. So anyone who was not able to get a showing appointment, they just don't get a chance to see the house. So new thing in this day and age is you have to schedule showings with an agent. And some of those require a pre-approval letter. Now, once you go see a home and you find one that you really like, it's time to write an offer. That is where we will work together. 
I will talk to the agent who's representing the seller. We will put together a very competitive and strategic offer. And um, there is a lot that goes into that as well. So you're gonna need um, your pre-approval, your proof of funds, the offer. And I do encourage that you have an offer letter to introduce yourself to the sellers. Now in that offer are the terms. The whole offer is what outlines your entire escrow period. And so the contract is really the outline of um, everything that's gonna go on into there. So what is in the contract and what happens once we open escrow. Once we open escrow, the buyer has three days to wire their initial earnest deposit money into escrow. And that is typically 3% of the purchase price and that is the money that will be protected by the contingencies that we agree upon and negotiate prior to opening escrow so there are three main contingencies your inspection contingency your appraisal contingency and your loan contingency so the inspection contingency the contract says it is 17 days, but it is not uncommon for that to be lowered to 10 days. I am seeing seven days and I am seeing some people completely remove that, which is a whole nother story that we can talk about later. The inspection contingency is when you are going to go into the house and get a home inspector and you can do all your inspections. There's like a million that you can do, um, but I recommend that you start with your home inspection, a sewer line inspection and a termite inspection. And the home inspector is going to then say if we should come back with any other professionals. Um, Within that agreed upon time frame, like I mentioned, could be seven, could be 10 days, is when we have to get all those inspections done. And then once we have that done, we can then prepare what's called a request for repairs to the sellers. So let's say we do an inspection and they're like, oh my gosh, you need a new roof, the plumbing shot. We can then go to the seller and say, hey, Mr. and Mr. Seller, will you either take care of these items or will you give me a credit so that I can take care of these items after we close escrow? The buyers and sellers will typically go back and forth until they come to a mutual agreement. Once they agree upon whether that's a credit, no credit, repairs, no repairs, once they come to a common ground, the buyer is then going to remove that first contingency, their inspection contingency. In removing that inspection contingency, they are saying they are completely satisfied with the entire condition of the home. You will have received disclosure documents from the sellers. You will have received documents from escrow. You will have the preliminary title report, a ton of paperwork. And removing that says you've looked over everything. You're good to go on the paperwork. You're good to go on the inspections. And that takes us to our second contingency the appraisal contingency. Now the appraiser is going to be your bank's eyes. They are a third party. They are going to go look at the house, make sure it's in good condition. There's no, it's habitable. It's, you know, the smoke detectors are there. Um, and they're going to look at comparable sold homes. So there's two things when the appraiser comes out, the condition of the home and the value. So the value is what they are going to say, yes, we approve the price that you're buying it at, or no, the market is so crazy, homes are selling way over asking and you are overpaying, so we're not gonna lend that amount. So if the appraiser comes back, with saying that the house is not worth the value that you have agreed upon. The buyer and seller can then do another negotiation and the buyer can go to the seller and say, hey, Mr. and Mr. Seller, I need you to reduce the price by 20 grand so my bank can lend me the amount of money I need to buy this home. The sellers can come back and say, no way, Jose, we have 20 other people who are willing to buy the house. Uh, you have to come up with cash. So that is another negotiation period. Um, if the value comes in under, if the value comes in good, we're okay to remove that contingency. Um, but I am seeing in today's market, because homes are selling so much over asking, that this is becoming an issue. So it's something we have to plan for ahead of time. The last and final contingency is the loan contingency. So 
there's a lot that goes on once you open escrow. The other back end side is working with the lender, the really good lender that we chose in the beginning to get all your finances together. They're gonna be sending you disclosures as well to sign off on. They're gonna be asking for a ton of documents. They're gonna ask for a, maybe a list of like, why did you spend this money here? Send me all your bank statements, send me your tax returns. So it's important to work closely with them and they have their timeline of submitting your file to the underwriter and getting approval. So that is all going on behind the scenes while we are checking the house. And then once they get what's called loan approval and the lender feels really comfortable and confident that your loan is gonna go through, that is when we can move, remove your loan contingency. <sighs> I just talked a lot. So <laughs> after we remove the loan contingency, we're gonna get ready to close escrow. You're going to sign your loan documents with escrow. You're gonna wire the rest of your money into escrow. We're gonna do a final walkthrough. If you negotiated any repairs, that's when we go back to the house, make sure that the seller did those repairs. We can sign off on it. If we didn't negotiate any repairs, it's our opportunity to go to the house and make sure it's in the same condition as when we first saw the house. There's no gaping holes in the wall. A tree didn't fall on the roof. That has actually happened, not to my clients, but a friend's client. A tree fell on the roof before they closed escrow, so they had to fix that before signing off on it. So we do our final walkthrough, and then the last couple things that happen is the lender, the bank funds the loan, the money goes to escrow and then the next day we record which is our closing date and the house is finally yours Hooray! we get keys we celebrate we take pictures pop the champagne you can move right in so as you can see there is a lot that goes into buying a house and it is so important that you have very strong team members supporting you, guiding you, answering all your questions, making sure you are aware of what's coming up, you know what the next steps are and every decision that you make is an empowered decision. So that is always my goal is to make my clients feel comfortable, confident, empowered and excited during this very intense time. A lot of things are happening, so I'm here to keep you organized. I'm here to be your cheerleader. I'm here to tell you about the risks about things, the options that you have, and to just set you up for success. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you next week. Bye.